Hi everyone and welcome to this session of uh, Imbibe Live Online, part of Global Bar Week. I'm Robin Black, editor of Imbibe UK, and I'm here today to talk all things mental health in hospitality, how to access help, the importance of self-care. Um, obviously I'm not going to do that by myself, I've got a fantastic panel of experts here, so please welcome William Meredith from Lioness, Camille Vidal from La Maison Wellness, and Ross Carter Hi. from The Drinks Trust. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Um, I think what would be good to start off is to just chat a little bit about your organisations and what you do and how it fits into all this. So Camille, do you want to kick off with that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm excited to be here and to bring this conversation with all of you. I think there's so much need for tools, knowledge, inspiration, education in hospitality industry when it comes to mental health all around the world for everyone, but definitely in our industry, we, we need to, to learn the tools to be able to support ourselves in, a, in this industry packed with energy, adrenaline and, and all of it. Um, so I'm the founder of La Maison Wellness and La Maison Wellness is a platform that is dedicated to expanding the conversation around mindful drinking and conscious consumption to inspire people to drink well and to live like healthy hedonists. And so through this idea of healthy hedonism is very much learning the tools of meditation and mindfulness. I'm a yoga and a meditation teacher. And so I inspire people to bring those tools, those practices into their everyday life to be able to live well and, uh, and celebrate life. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and Ross, do you want to talk us through how the Drinks Trust, I mean, many people will know it's a charity for the drinks industry, but how it fits into this conversation specifically, how you've been moving towards doing more in this area? Yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously, with the Drinks Trust, we've been the Drinks Trust since the 12th of March. Um, and before that, we were the Wine of Spirit Trades Benevolent Society, which is a bit of a mouthful. Um, but we've been in existence since 1886, uh, supporting people in the drinks industry through with hardship and and then more recently with with uh, well-being services that all kicked off about three years ago with the introduction of a of a helpline that we launched <clears throat> and uh, we started providing a little bit of therapeutic services as well and then back in june we expanded the services that we're offering in the wellness space so now we're doing video therapy services um through an, an, an outside contractor but to all the people in the drinks industry effectively and that's irrespective of tenure how long you've been in this in the industry and that's all free of charge um and we also offer sleep and insomnia treatment through sleep station who are the leading provider to the nhs uh, we provide mind mindful drinking courses through club soda who i uh, i know that uh, Camille works with a great deal too. Um, and yeah, we're now looking to expand the phone line reach as well. So it will be 24 hours before the end of the year rather than 12 hours. And it will provide an awful lot more in the wellbeing space too. So we've significantly increased what we're doing in terms of wellbeing um, services for the, for the drinks and drinks hospitality industry. And Will, I mean, most people here will know you for your role at Lioness, but do you want to talk about why you're here on this subject in particular? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, so I'm I'm head bartender at Lioness, and I guess um, I'm I'm representing or I guess hoping to explain a little bit about you know life on this side of the bar uh, in today's day. And I guess you know having been through uh, various forms of uh, mental health issues myself, um, and since kind of trying to put myself on a path of mental well-being, I feel like you know I, I just really want to come here and, and talk about what those things are, and and you know normal pitfalls that we fall into and routines and, and ways of kind of just pulling yourself out of it. And I guess just acknowledging when those things actually do crop up and the difference between them. Mm -hmm. Do you think hospitality is an industry that particularly has a problem around um, mental health as in it, it exacerbates maybe because of the, the nature of the industry? Is that something you think will? Uh, I think uh, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't use those words. I mean, it's an excellent question because obviously it's, it's something that, you know, it's, it's a really challenging industry to be in. I mean, just the fact that we work nights alone is something that isn't part of a natural cycle in itself. So I think it's definitely very conducive to, the, to you know, situations where you can develop those kind of mental health problems. And, and like I said, I've been through a few myself. I actually, um, a couple of years ago, I was, I was diagnosed with anxiety-induced depression. Um, and since then undertook, a, I'm, I'm still on a sort of daily regimen of, uh, of, um, antidepressants and CBD, CBT therapy. Um, and 
you know, that, that I was always for a long time, pretty mindful about how I treat my body and myself. Obviously, like all of us, we do enjoy having a little bit of a good time, but you know, I didn't think I was in any way exceptional compared to other people. And, you know, that I fell into that situation. And I think if I can do that, then so many other people out there are probably currently in that situation and maybe not even aware of it. They just assume that's the lifestyle because there are small little things that I've noticed, particularly since everything in lockdown happened. And, and the big one that really kind of hit home for me was, you know, we... We, we work five days like most of the working public, but, you know, those five days that we work are five nights and therefore, you know, your days off, you have two nights at home to yourself or with your loved ones or with your friends. And when you're working, you don't get those nights. So people that work in a, in a daytime routine still have seven nights a week potentially to unwind and, and switch off and, and re reset, I guess. And I think that's one thing I realized is the biggest impact to you know, how we behave as an industry, you know, working behind the bar is those, those, those night hours and not having those times to kind of reset your mind and, and take a bit of time for yourself. Yeah. And if I can add on to that, I also think that the, the reason maybe why we love this industry so much, but also what creates a little bit of the challenge is we get so much adrenaline doing a 12 hour shift you know those hours when you're busy behind the bar you've got loads of people and you're like you really kick into this um fight and flight response into this adrenaline rushing into your body that's what we love also in this industry is this you know intensity but that's also what makes it really hard if you don't know how to balance that if you don't know the tools on how to cope with this really big spike of like adrenaline cortisol you know fight and flight response all of that into your body and you don't know how to balance it and you work five days a week 12 hours a shift and then you go out after your shift to have that moment when you can unwind when you can release because if you ask someone who works nine to five, I guarantee you that there's nobody finishing at five or 6 p.m. going home and going to bed. Obviously, you want that time when you're going to have the space to like relax and feel like that you do something else than just working. And I think the challenge in our industry is we don't know what to do. And at, you know, midnight, two in the morning, three in the morning or whatever time, five in the morning when you finish work, you know, depending on where you work in the world. You, there's not that much that you can do rather than just sitting at the bar and having a drink with your team. There's not that much that like we are taught on things that we can do that is maybe having something that is non-alcoholic, that is maybe, you know, cycling home, that is maybe having just a chat, et cetera, et cetera. There's not that much that we can do at, or at those hours to have that space. And then it becomes a bit of a there is an imbalance and because of this imbalance, unfortunately, because we don't know, we don't have the awareness, we don't have the knowledge, the education, all the tools, we turn towards coping mechanisms that are easy access, which is alcohol in our industry. And I think that that is the, the cycle that too often we see happening in hospitality industry, just because of the nature of what we do and the lack of knowledge that we have at the beginning. And I think that we see many people, including myself, that had to go through a little bit of a burnout and a really realizing the imbalance. So for you, Will, having those more challenges where you had to learn, you had to learn you know, support system and what you could do to support yourself, but we had to go through that to find the balance for ourselves. And I think that the, the aim of what you're doing at the Drink Stress or what we're doing with having this conversation on this panel is maybe to bring the knowledge and the education to the younger generation in the hospitality industry or to the people currently working in the hospitality industry so they can learn without having to, to burn out or to hit rock bottom or to, to go on to extreme of imbalances. And Ross, when you're out talking to companies and individuals about this idea of hospitality and mental health, is that a message that's getting through that this industry in particular has to really start looking at those issues? Um, well, it's certainly the one that we that we drive. I mean, it's difficult to, to, to say precisely <clears throat> whether this industry is, 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 you know, subject to more strain than others or, or struggles more specifically. I mean, there was research about 18 months ago from the Royal Society on Public Health, um, which was fairly damning, I'm sad to say. Um, although, again, it is not, it's not, it's not uh, shown side by side with other industries, but 
I think when we look at the wider hospitality industry, and this research was across the entire hospitality industry, everybody from you know cleaning staff, chefs, spa staff, you know pubs, London-based bars, restaurants. It was across a very broad, broad range of uh, respondents, but an awful lot of them reported that they didn't feel as though they were particularly well looked after by employers, um, and an awful lot, you know, said that they felt that they required, you know, that, that assistance. I think it was about 24% reported that they needed that kind of psychological assistance or had done at some stage in their in their careers and I think that you know the last thing we want to do is is is, is in any way uh you know um, point the finger at employers here I think it's 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 a, an industry slightly different to many others uh that you know as we've said here it's 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 often a nighttime industry not exclusively but but certainly to a certain degree I think there's security of tenures can be an issue too I think people, you know, in this industry, from my experience, having worked in the industry, people do tend to move from place to place on a fairly regular basis. And of course, under two years of employment, you know, your 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 employment rights are nothing quite like what they are after two years of employment. Um, a lot of people are on zero hours contracts. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And if we think about people working in, you know, perhaps small pubs in in rural areas or cities outside of London, which often kind of get forgotten when we have these kind of conversations. Um, you know, there's there's going to be a vast range of people and circumstances. Um, and I think that as an industry, it's, it just seems to be the nature of, of the industry to a point that there is this lack of security to a certain degree in in in, in job kind of longevity. And, and oftentimes people are only in it for a short space of time and, th and then move elsewhere. So I think that all adds to that, to that picture of of creating what, what can be quite, you know, challenging circumstances when it comes to well-being for people in the industry. Mental health issues can be quite wide ranging. We've touched on a few here, but are there some areas of mental health where the industry does not too badly in recognising and helping people and others that we're just terrible at? Or do we just need work across the board? And if anyone's got any thoughts on that. It's, it's, it's a real tricky question, because I think I mean, uh, I mean, Ross, you're probably better versed on on the actual facts to back that up. But um, just from the experience background, um, I think there are areas where, you know, this industry is madly supportive. And, and whilst, you know, officially speaking, you know, employers, as we've just as you've just spoken about, you know, may not have, use those means to support staff with mental with mental wellness and mental health. But I think one thing that, you know, is so um, I guess, like inspiring to a lot of people within this industry is that, you know, the second you walk through those doors, you're treated like an equal and an adult amongst your colleagues and coworkers. And I think that's one of the, the huge initial draws to this industry is as an 18 year old, you're, you're plugging around amongst 25, 26 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, and they're all treating you like an adult that you want to be. And I think that's why a lot of people, you know, get brought into it in such a young age and fall in love with it straight away. Um, and I think on that side of things, in terms of like, you know, respect and treating people, you know, in, in, a, in a relatively equal way, obviously I'm, I'm talking circumspectly here. I'm not, you know, talking about everything as a total, but I think there is elements within that side of things on the more social element that is definitely hugely beneficial because all of a sudden you, you have a place where you belong and you're amongst friends in an instant. And uh, so on that side of things, I say, yeah, there's definitely doing phenomenally well, but I mean, talking about on the official side, if you're talking about, you know, actual diagnosing and, and medicating and, and creating environments for people where they can have a, a fully, you know, a full life, I guess, then yeah, maybe there is room for, for work there. Um, I think also an element, sorry, I'm just going to crack on there. Yeah. Um, an element is like, you know, we, we, a lot of us come from this background of like, you earn your stripes through hard work. And, you know, and we fall into this pattern, again, at a young age, and we believe that you have to put in all those crazy hours to earn the respect or, you know, to be almost validated by your co like your peers and you know we all love that moan about how many hours we've worked each week and all that kind of stuff and it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because we tell ourselves oh we've gone through the rig doing all this but then we want to do that because we want to you know strive to reach amongst the people around us so it's a it's a real cat and mouse situation on that front i would say no i think you're absolutely spot on uh it's, it's almost from thinking back to you know the age of 18 to you know, 25 when I spent quite a few years in hospitality, it is, it's a passion, it's a, almost like a passion project, you know, people, most, most people you find in the industry are very passionate about, about what they do and it's a badge of honour to, to, to kind of almost to work your way through those those hard hours. I remember doing the one and only 100 hour week at Wentworth Golf Club sometime in the late 90s and it was a huge, a huge kind of almost an honour to have achieved it, you know, but I think we we're, we're our own worst enemy in a sense in that in that regard. In terms of the services available, in terms of the conversation, I think in the last three or four years, it's come on leaps and bounds. 
if you look at the kind of the, the, the scope of the conversation that's being had now about well-being in the, in the hospitality and drinks industry, it's nothing like what it was five years ago. It's 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 far far more far far more open and uh, and talked about you know regularly. In terms of the services, I think now you know we're I hope now starting to see the pickup in 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 demand. I mean there was a lot of conversation before the services were necessarily there, and now the services are, are there too. You know, so I think perhaps one would hope that that kind of follows suit you know the conversation has to be had before people the services are ready and then people start to you see the take up of service um and you know i think between ourselves and so many other pro providers out there now the services are there so it's really about getting the message across that people really need to take advantage and 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 make sure that they're getting the, the assistance that they need because it's a lot of it's preventative as much as treatment you know so it's you know uh, and Cadmium will be able to, 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 you know, is the best person to speak on that. It's, 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 it's as much about acknowledging that it's quite a high octane, high octane, high adrenaline industry, and and you know, treating treating the, the fact that 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 that's part of your day to day routine, rather than having to treat, uh, you know, a a, a, a a challenge later on. You know. Yeah, and I think it's on, you know learning the tools and the, the system to make it sustainable. I think, you know, we can all agree that it's an amazing industry where people are so passionate that we love, you know, this sense of like belonging, feeling like we're part of a community, this hospitality that like we share with the world, but we also have between each other. But I think we, as you were, you know, both saying, we, we work really hard in the way that we don't, always have the structure and the system to support ourselves, which end up, you know, having to change our role or to grow within the industry or too often to leave the industry, even because we just don't find ways to make it sustainable. And I think that's a shame for our industry because we put so many hours and so much hard work into becoming, you know, a professional uh, that is knowledgeable and successful and talented. And then seeing people that have to leave the industry just because they don't find the balance for themselves within the industry, we're just losing talents. We're just losing amazing Amazing people, and I think that if you know we give the education to the managers and the venues and the, the owners, that we we make those resources and um, you know knowledge more accessible. Because I think that still to these days there's a lot of people that don't know where to find the resource, that don't know where to to find help. Then we will be able to like make sure that we we maintain people in the industry and that we truly support them to to be thriving in this industry rather than just trying to survive in this industry. So now seems like a good time to talk about maybe self-care. Camille, have you got any sort of practical ideas that anyone who's watching this who might be struggling can put in place to maybe what you were saying, Ross, about sort of slightly preventative rather than really waiting for it to get really bad? Absolutely. Um, I think we, you know, we live in the in, in an industry and we work in an industry where we give so much of ourselves. You know, we we you know there's always this idea of like you can't pour from an empty cup. And unfortunately, in the hospitality industry, we pour on empty cups most of the time. And I think it's learning how to refill your cup. It's learning how to say no. How the structure and what you can put in place is looking after yourself. Is you know accepting that like sometime maybe you need to cut down a bit what you drink maybe you need to make an effort of you know being conscious of what you eat and how you can how you can recharge the battery so if i think that also what we've seen in the in the past few years in the industry which is amazing it's the industry realizing the importance of physical health with exercising more, you know, going to the gym, work like doing workout together, and that's amazing. But I think that between this, there's also the how can you rest more? How can you recharge? How can you look after yourself? Not just by like going from one extreme to another, aka going out late and drinking too much, but that's fine. I will go to the gym tomorrow morning. But actually, you know, talking with your manager on hours, making sure that like you ask your 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 manager to have if possible, two days in the row, two days off in the row to make sure that like you eat properly when you go to your shift and you don't, you know, end up feeling really deprived at the end of your shift and exhausted because just you haven't fueled your body. So I think that like looking into what you eat, 
making sure that you drink enough water, making sure that you are mindful when it comes to alcohol consumption, you know, that it is an active pleasure and it is what we do, but we like for, for work, but we don't have to imbibe so much. Making sure that you look after your physical health by, you know, moving, exercising, but that you also look after your emotional and your mental well-being. Because I think that, you know, we see the conversation around mental health coming up more and more and more and you know rightly so we we definitely need to and i was reading um a few days ago this uh, this comment saying like we hope that we are the generation that will change mental health issue and stigma to mental health support and i think that at the moment we talk about mental health when it's an issue when i think people and all of us need to understand that our mental health is part of our well-being the same way that our physical you know, um, mental health and and um, and uh, is part of like our well being in general. And we don't need to talk about mental health just when we are experiencing, you know, anxiety and depression or feeling completely overwhelmed and isolating. But actually, what can we do before that? So I think all those, this, you know things that you can implement into your everyday life will help you to have the support system for yourself to be able to live and work in this industry and feeling at your best. I just want to, I kind of want to echo that as well. And uh, kind of, I guess, suppose like offer like a the practical example of all of that. Cause uh, I, there was a phase when, you know, I, I accepted that I needed to make some changes and, you know, I, I tried every bloody thing I could think of, you know, I was, I was going around, I, uh, I was doing all the running, I was doing exercise, I was riding around, I went to the driving range. I, you know, I, I, I tried, you know, going cold turkey and not drinking at all. I tried being a vegan for a bit. I, tr like, I tried so much stuff and like, you know, a small percentage of that stuff kind of stuck. Um, and the things that I found hugely beneficial is exactly what you said, is like finding that balance. And it's not about, you know, paying yourself back by after a big night out going and absolutely destroying yourself physically in order to recover or make up for it. but it's almost like you ought to think of it in the reverse way. And it's kind of like, if you do make that conscious decision to go out and enjoy yourself with friends, it's like, will I wake up tomorrow feeling guilty about it? You know, if the answer, if you can honestly tell yourself the answer is going to be no, and that, you know, you know, you've, you've done all that kind of stuff, and, but you know, you still had a, a productive time, then, you know, it, it, it takes a lot of the stress out of it because a big thing I found, and it was because probably at the you know, time I was enjoying a drink too many after work or, you know, on my days off and you, you come up to your work week and you just feel really guilty with yourself and you, you get this kind of like sense of shame is a strong word but you get this sense of like why did I do that all week I didn't do anything I mean now I, I try and run as regularly as possible I, I'm a coach for an under 13s football team you know I took two interests that were just like completely outside of this bar industry and went I'm just going to try them out and see what happens and you know, the, the, the football thing really stuck because it's like you're, you're, you're teaching other people, you're helping other people learn. It's fun, you know, it's, it's, it's active, um, which is hugely beneficial. But most importantly, it had absolutely not, nothing to do with this industry. And, you know, it sounds weird saying that when, you know, we're talking about an industry that we're all so passionate about. But sometimes just taking a step out of it for a little while, you know, that happens to be my specific example. And but a bunch of people have a bunch of other examples um, and I think that they're, they're hugely beneficial because it just allows you to step away from everything for a day or two and just like you said, Camille, fill, fill your cup back up and just reset the batteries. And, and it's, so, it's people... so important because just to add on that, on your point, if you look at like the industry of like people that work in a different industry than us, when they've done with their nine to five, what they do to enjoy, to relax, to connect, to catch up with friends, to unwind, is to go to bars, to go to restaurants. But for us, that's what we do for a living. And so because to find the balance on like, then what can we do to like have these moments that is more playtime, that is more switching off with our work. And we need to find that. And it's actually really, really healthy and essential to have interests that are outside our industry because you know, it, like very often our friends will work in hospitality industry when we have a night out, like when we have a night off, we go and see the other bars and our friends behind the bar. And it kind of becomes something that we just, you know, navigate and like circulate around the same industry, talking about the same thing. And we just never switch off. And we need that moment where you're going to go and like, you know, teach that, that that team of like young players and just have something that will fill you up in a different way. And I think that's really, really essential. Absolutely. 
And I think I think if there is room, sorry, I'm just going to quickly jump in. If there is room for like support out there, I think it is that it's showing people in this industry avenues to to other things that are just completely different that they can just use to switch off and completely enjoy themselves, but still feel like they've done something at the end of the day, you know? Yeah, I was going to say that during lockdown, when everyone was obviously stuck at home and had time for all this stuff, we had some great stories in our, uh, to Imbibe, which we ran both in the magazine and on the website, about people who had, um, you know, found painting again or had taken up mm -hmm. playing music or woodwork. Or there were some really good examples of stuff that I'd urge anyone to go and have a look at the website if they sort of just want a, an idea of stuff they could try and maybe spark up a, a passion. Um, because you're right, it can be quite all encompassing industry. So obviously having some time out from that is going to be beneficial. And just, just on that as well, though, it's, it's like, it's, it's part of that, like, yes, like taking up those hobbies is a fantastic thing, but it's, it's, if you can find another community of people that does it and you can go and join and be part of a different group of people that, you know, like, like Cammy said, like you end up pulling out of that circle, but you find a whole new circle of people. So rather than still doing it by yourself, I think it's like finding another group of people with a whole different set of interests and a whole different set of priorities. It's, it's a really nice thing, I think. Moving it on from that, if someone gets into a situation where they have let it go too far and things are beginning to crack and, and look really bad and they, and they need some more in-depth, more professional help, I suppose, um, do you think that there is structure in place for people to get that help via the industry? I know we'll come on to the charity stuff for us later, but I was just wondering if Camille and Will had a sort of thoughts about how difficult or hard that is to access if you're going to a manager or, or a company and saying I really need help is it there so I think that it is more there than it was a few years ago I still think that we have so much work to do I took my mental health first course last year um the first aid course and it was seriously the best thing that I've done and I really highly recommend anyone to do it and it should be mandatory for managers to do it absolutely 100 percent. that should be part of being put in a managing position where you have to look after other people you should do that training absolutely because i think that unfortunately we also work in an industry where we understaffed way too often there's not enough people working we do too many hours we have too much on our plate and very often the managers just don't know how to, to handle the situation. Just don't really know, you know, one of the employees is gonna come up and say, I'm just not feeling great at the moment. I just feel really low. I feel really depressed or I'm having this and this and that. And they're just not equipped to, you know, direct them to, the, to where they can have like support and help or even to support them through this, you know? So I think that definitely this uh, mental health um, first aid course is an amazing tool for for employees to to take. I think we have more resources, and I'm sure that like Ross, you will you will share loads of uh, information on where it can be found. There is things like Healthy Host Board that like we, we when we launched that with team a few years ago, and I helped on the on the launch. It was um, definitely gathering this information for people to to be able to find. But I think that like there's still stigma. There's still you know the the, I mean, for someone feeling like low and, you know, struggling with finding the balance, you have the courage to go and talk to your managers, to, to open up to that. Unfortunately, at the moment, and I hope that like with all this conversation, we, we provide a, a safer space and more um, supportive space for people to, to speak up, but it is still something that is really, really challenging. And I think that by, you know, teaching and educating the, the managers as much as we can with the, the support on how to handle the situation, as well as the knowledge on, on the resources that are available, we will keep on making an, a positive impact on that. I mean, look, the, hard, the hardest thing in this situation, it, it, it's coming to terms with it and accepting that, you know, there is something, there is something that you're not coping with very well, you know, whether it's a fundamental, wiring problem or whether it's a purely environmental thing it's uh the hardest thing is is turning around and saying like i need help and like we all say you know you should always it should be so easy but you know it took me years to do and by the time i had the courage to, to stand up and say something and you know I, I spoke to my manager and and luckily he was very supportive because um, his sister went through a similar thing but um by the time i'd done that i think i was way down a path already that you know i was that 
it was, it was not like it was too late to come back, but it was a much harder journey to kind of put myself in a good headspace. And I think that's, that's the, that's the, the, the best way to kind of get through it. It's, it's like you said, Ross, it's like prevention, finding preventative measures rather than trying to just cure a problem. It, it's finding ways to catch this early, whether that be through mental health first aids or whether that be through other means. But I think that like being able to catch that early, making sure that people are comfortable in an environment to talk about those sort of things, I think it's hugely important and I think it would be massively beneficial. Yeah. Do you do things now, um, Will, and thank you, by the way, for talking so eloquently in, in about this and your own experiences. Are there things you do with your own team now, things you look out for that, you, that will, you know, might be good for other people to know? I think well, it's definitely been a really tricky time. Obviously, the last, you know, the last eight months has really thrown question and confusion into that. But, you know, since coming back, I think it's, 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 it's been a real tough time for everyone, you know, like, every every week you just don't know what's going on there's doubt you're like you know will we be open next week are they going to change their minds like what's going to happen in terms of how we operate so i'd say at the moment it's probably harder than ever to to keep tabs on that and keep track of it because you know getting your house in order both personally and professionally right now is is really tough because you know a lot of people don't know how long they're going to be employed for and a lot of people don't know you know what their employment situation is going to be in terms of like how many hours they're going to have available to work. You know, it's, it's a really, I would say it's probably harder than harder than ever right now to, to keep track of that kind of thing. Um, and therefore like, you know, we as a team at the moment, it's like, it's, it's just try and be there for as much for each other as possible because uh, you know, we are very much backs against the wall in, in this industry at the moment. And this curfew definitely hasn't helped things. And, you know, Edinburgh's closed down again and it's, it's almost kind of like, where do you start right now in terms of the, that sort of situation? And, you know, we're, we're, we're operating at the moment on, on four days service a week. So luckily our team is uh, in a position where they've got three days where they can recover. And actually in a weird way, it's, you know, people come in on, on the Thursday when we come back to work and everyone's in high spirits, you know, everyone's, I, I really like that uh, analogy of filling up the cup because everyone's cups are full that they're coming in. They've had a few days to kind of recover and reset, you know, but then you go through it all again that week. And, and it's, it's a bit of a sort of, Although it's such an unsure time, it's a bit of a Groundhog Day situation at the moment in the sense that like every time you come into work, it's it's these questions about, you know, what's happening, what's what's the next week going to be like, you know, are we still going to be open, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's just hard not having those sort of answers for people. But, you know, it's definitely it's, we're in that situation now, like in in the bar as a management team where it is we're trying to just keep it as open as humanly possible. And it's the second one piece of information drips to us. We're just trying to share it with as many people as we can within the team. So, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. If, if I can add on before Rush share with us all the information on where we can find the resources <laughs> is the uncertainty of the situation is really, really triggering. It is putting you straight onto that fight and flight response, which is your um, survival modes that we have in our body, which is our problem solving situation and response to that. Um, which is essential for our, you know, um, way of operating. But if we spend too much time in that fight and flight, that's where it starts being problematic, you know. So first of all, self-care is essential and so needed right now in this situation because of the uncertainty of the world, because we can't plan anything. We don't know what's happening. And all of that is just keeping us feeling a bit. <gasps> so I will say that like, really making sure that for all of us to remember that 2020 and this year has been so challenging and i always say there's three things that like to keep on the top of our mind is first of all having the awareness to be aware of how do you feel today when you get to work and you're like feeling a bit you know tired and a bit stressed and a bit overwhelmed because is it going to be busy or is it not going to be busy or all of that just having the awareness to the feeling the sensation the internal internal dialogue the what's happening in your body and your mind in the moment was that judgment was that anything just having the awareness mindfulness is becoming so essential and needed because mindfulness is allowing yourself to be present in the moment with that projecting in the future and going through all worst case scenario, we all do that, or going back in the past and actually allowing yourself to be present. It's really hard to just be in the right now for our brain is really, really difficult. So just having the awareness of how you feel is essential. The second thing is kindness 
be kind to yourself, be kind to others. Like we're all going through so much this year, just remembering that like kindness is essential. And when you go a bit hard on yourself with, you know, self-judgment or on others, just step back, just remember to be, to put kindness at the center. And then gratitude. Gratitude is essential in keeping our spirit up in, you know, coping with what's happening. And maybe it is, you know, waking up in the morning and, uh, and you know, reminding yourself the things that you're grateful for. It's so easy to just watch the news and just be, you know, feeling like upset and really um, demotivated and not seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and just by bringing this like you know this gratitude attitude and remembering the things that you're grateful for today that cup of coffee that you just made for yourself that friend that just texted you something really nice you or whatever you have in your life that like is you know bringing some some sunshine into your day just being grateful for it and i think by having this awareness kindness and gratitude that really help you to cope with what's happening this year. I'm definitely going to nick the phrase gratitude, attitude and start throwing it about. Brilliant, brilliant choice of words. <laughs> um, and of course, one thing we are very thankful for is having the Drinks Trust um, where you can go and get help. Um, and there's a lot of it there. So Ross, do you just want to let everyone know where to go to get help and then what sorts of things you can offer? Yeah, absolutely. And but before I do that, I think just to echo what what, what Camille says, I think it's absolutely it's it's perhaps we're getting to a, a stage in, in in our attitudes towards well-being and mental health where it's kind of the end of stigma. But is it culture? Is a, is a question that perhaps I ponder sometimes because if you think about it in terms of physical health. You know, we all we've all heard of BMI tests, cholesterol, blood pressure, all the indicators that tell us whether or not we're in the right physical shape and whether or not we need to change lifestyle for the future we're not necessarily that it exists but we're not there perhaps culturally with with mental health you know um you know the, the stress that we put ourselves under the the you know the tiredness the uh you know the the day-to-day the -day, uh, you know pressure points it's not something that we that we necessarily measure and recognize you know as as uh, as elements of what contributes to ultimately what could be a, a more challenging situation and i think that that's the culture that we need to adopt in the future and we as an organization have been looking at this for some time and in 2021 and beyond we're, we're, we're very keen to be part of of that culture shift as well um, all the work that we do currently is very much focused at the individual and and, and i'm pleased that we've been able to do that um, but i think in the future we need to be part of that conversation too which is that culturally how are we how are we making this assessment and what are we providing individuals in order to not just help themselves but to help the people that they work with like mental health first aider training etc so i think that the conversation does need progressing and there's more to do and i think we're heading in the right direction all of us but but certainly given the kind of industry we've described it is i think that we all need to kind of help each other to get there really because we can't necessarily depend on small margin businesses with high turnover of staff to provide the best mental health care uh, you know in the world uh, it'd be naive, I think, to, 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 to think that. Um, so I think that we as a community really need to be part of that solution. Uh, and, and I hope that we can be in the future. But in terms of what we're doing now to answer your question, um, you know, like I said earlier, we're, we're offering a series of well-being uh, and financial assistance um, and more to come. But specifically in well-being, we're offering um, three sessions of, of video therapy with uh, at least MA qualified counsellors. Um, and that can be increased to six, depending on circumstances. It can be increased even further if, if, if there's quite, uh, you know, severe need for it. Um, but that's open to absolutely anybody in, in the drinks hospitality industry. And it doesn't matter whether you're the MD of a business or you work behind, you've recently got a job working behind a bar. We've purposefully made that open to everybody because we don't want there to be any barriers to access for that. Typically, the services we offer are means tested but we've decided that for this year and probably into next year we're not means testing uh, counselling it's just open to everybody so anybody in the industry now can get access to at least three sessions of therapy absolutely free of charge um, we're obviously working with club soda as i mentioned uh, to do mindful drinking um, and tuition and awareness which has had some really good pickup um, and we'll probably be extending that into next year as well um, because as, as camille says you know we are it's there it's part of the culture isn't it it's it's it's, it's very easily accessible you know having worked in the su supply chain for many years you know I, I, there's often been many boxes of wine in the house you know because because it was perhaps a little cheaper for me to get it than it might have been for other people um so it's there for all of us you know we need to be conscious of that um sleep and insomnia 
we decided on sleeping insomnia long before lockdown, conscious of the fact that lots of people working behind bars were working shift patterns, which were very irregular, particularly through the winter, not seeing daylight for days on end. Uh, we felt that it was really important to start offering sleep insomnia uh, treatment. We're now finding that it's getting as much pickup from people in the supply chain as it is people who would have been behind the bar, because I think a lot of these people are, you know, are finding that they're, you know, in fairly precarious, you know, positions with their employment, because the knock-on effect from bar to supplier is, is becoming more and more evident. So counselling, sleep and insomnia treatment, uh, mindful drinking, they're all accessible to absolutely anybody. All you need to do is go to the website, drinkstrust.org.uk, uh, go to our wellbeing pages and you can apply right there and we'll be back to you within 48 hours typically. And then finally, the, on the finance side, we have historically always offered financial relief and financial relief is, it's recognised to be, you know, if, if, if there are financial pressures on you, it will have an impact on your wellbeing. So it's at the core of that offering too, really. Um, and as of today, we launched our end of furlough campaign uh, to people who've been made redundant or who've been furloughed on much lower wages for any time in the last four months. We launched that today. It's the second one we've done this year. We did one during COVID. Uh, we delivered about £500,000 worth of grants then. And we've gone live today. And we're looking to do about a similar amount in the next two months. And already today, we've had nearly 150 applications in four or five hours. So um, I suspect that's going to be many thousands of applications in the next few weeks, but that's central to what we do. And it's an important part of, 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 of mental care as well, because you would want to alleviate some of that pressure. Um, so yeah, 250 pound grants are available through applications through the same website, uh, which is drinkstrust.org.uk. So, so please access them there. Brilliant. That seems quite a positive note to end on. I don't know if there's um, any last messages anyone's got to add that they you know, would like to communicate to anyone out there or any kind of easy tips and hints before we, we close off or do we think we've covered everything? I mean, just, just I mean, very, very quickly from, from this side of things is like, you know, we, I think there's a surprising amount of people that, that are in a similar situation and, and feel similar ways. And I think those people that are out there, like, I guess like, don't try and ignore it. It's, it's there and like, it, it, I wasted a lot of time by trying to ignore it. And you know there is support out there now and there's so many ways in which that support exists and it's the more people that you know acknowledge that and, and take part the more growth that support's going to become or you know the quicker that support's going to grow and i think that can only be a good thing for absolutely everybody and if, if we're talking about doing this as ross said as a, as, a, as a community or on a more communal level then it needs you know people to to stand up and and i guess come forward and, and let people know because there is there is no fear behind it and or, you know, there, there is no, oh, I don't know the right words. I'm sorry, I'm on the spot here. But, you know, there, there, is, there is no shame in doing that. And I think it's important that people, you know, have that confidence to come forward. And if that's not publicly, you know, it's, it's via, I guess, through any anyone that they can trust or anyone they know close. It doesn't necessarily have to be the big step of going forward for, officially. It's just got to be talking to people about it. Um, and, yeah, that's it for me, I guess. And I think it's a lot of people don't, learn or don't you know join the conversation around this because they don't feel um concerned or they don't feel like they they don't have a problem so it's not for them and i think that's really important for people to understand that like even though if you don't feel like you are experiencing some challenges or imbalance a that doesn't mean that like you don't because actually you might not realize that you might not be aware you know you might not realize that actually maybe your relationship with alcohol is unhealthy that doesn't mean that you drink way too much but maybe there's just a little bit of an imbalance and by doing the mindful drinking program you might be able to change that and to really empower your relationship with alcohol and to to you know feel the benefits of it i think that sometimes we just have this idea that if you have mental health issue that means you you can't function or that you if you if you like have you know an addictive relationship with alcohol that means you're a person who drinks you know like pure alcohol or you live on the street like i think we have this like misconception of what it looks like and what it means and i think that by all learning and you know raising the the awareness and the understanding of what is mental health, how we can support each other, how we can live better, then we all learn tools together. And rather that it, you know, it's for yourself to be able to apply in your life, or it's to be able to help a loved one, a close one, a colleague, you know, whoever, like you say, Will, you were lucky that like your manager knew how to handle this situation because his sister, 
you know, had similar things, but that's because he, because of this experience and his situation, he had the, the, the tools to, to handle it. But if we all learn together, then we will be able to apply that for ourselves, but also for each other as a community, as an industry and together in the world. And I think that can just be positive on taking those trainings, learning, educating ourselves on mental health, on well-being in general, to be able to, to all live better together. I think that's true. And I think it also, I think people wait until things have got really bad. I almost think uh, we talk about mental health issues when they've got quite extreme very often. And so you think, oh, well, I'm not that miserable, I'm not that bad. My problem, my issues aren't so extreme. And then as we were talking about, there's no preventative measures going in and it all gets too late which is why it's good things like the drinks trust. I mean, those counseling sessions, they can be a couple or it can be a lot, but the point is don't wait until you need lots and lots and lots of them when maybe just speaking up and having a chat can, can set a smaller bowl rolling, but which will have a significant difference. Um, so thank you all very much for joining me and for talking about that. Hopefully we'll keep this conversation open through in Bible Live online and the magazine website. Um, anyone needs any help, please do go to the Drinks Trust, do talk to someone. Um, if you'd like to get in touch with myself or any of the speakers from today's panel, you can contact us via our profiles on the left-hand side of the screen. Um, and a reminder that all the sessions from this event are available to watch on demand. So um, you can check out the rest of the programme or have another look at this if that interests you. Um, so thanks for watching and thanks to um, Ross and Camille and Will for talking on this and giving up your time. Thank you very much indeed. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.